testify that I'm preaching what I'm preaching. You see, we understand I preached it so clearly already that she had a reputation. But there's one aspect of this that I don't want you to miss. Jesus had a reputation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus himself had a reputation. I can tell you that there have been times of my life that nobody could fix the problem that I had. I remember, I'm just going to throw one little example out there that all of us can probably identify with. Some years back, my daughter, I bought her a Nissan Altima car. We put six distributors on that car. And sometime it seemed like it may have run a little better. Everything we found online and every mechanic that we talked to said it's got to be the distributor. Well, we put so many distributors on that car until I got tired of doing it. Some of you said, I'm surprised you went past two. Yeah, we put six on that car. Finally, after we tried everything we could, one day I said, I got this idea. It's only $99 to take that car down to the Nissan dealership. And let's let them folks that made the car and know about the car, let them deal with that. Oh, there's a boy, I feel like preaching here tonight. So we took that car down to the Nissan dealership. About four or five days went by. They're only supposed to have it about one day. And the, and the, and the, oh, the um, head manager there, he called me one day and he said, Now, uh, Joe, I, I need to tell you. He said, We don't normally spend this much time for a $99, you know, inspection package. He said, But I put it with this one mechanic and he said he couldn't figure it out. And I put it with another mechanic and he couldn't figure it out. Then I put it with another mechanic. He said, We went through five mechanics. He said, I finally put it with my best mechanic. He said he put it on a machine that nobody else has but Nissan. And he said we found out what the problem is. And I'm standing like, praise God. What is it? He said all it is uh, is the mass airflow sensor has gone bad. And I said well how much is that going to cost? He said well it's going to cost this amount of money X, Y, Z on the way home. I took my daughter's car, hopped in that thing, hopping, skipping and jerking and jumping. And we stopped by A to Z Auto Parts I bought a $35 mass airflow sensor, picked it on, put it on there, and guess what? It got fixed. Here's what I'm telling you. You might go to AA meetings. Uh, you might go to drug intervention. Uh, you might go to the world's therapist, and you might go here and go there, and nobody can help you. But let me tell you, after you've gone to that mechanic and that mechanic and that mechanic, there comes a time in your life uh, that one man with a reputation that can fix your junk, uh, with a man that's got a reputation, who can set it all straight a man that knows how to fix your mess let me tell you I was messed up as a child I was bounced from family to family I was tossed from pillar to post but let me tell you amen my life in shambles on the verge of divorce in 1997 I got down on my face in the Ferndale Church of God and I knelt in an altar and guess what one reputation met another reputation he said I got the reputation he said I'm the blind eye opener I'm the deaf ear unstopper I'm the one that can fix it all somebody say thank God Woo! amen let me tell you if somebody came to you tonight and gave you the cure to cancer you'd be all you'd be excited let me tell you I got the cure for a sin sick soul you see you can try to get better but you can only get so good but I know somebody who can wash your sins away I know somebody who can wash your sins in the blood of the lamb and when one reputation meets another reputation all you gotta do is say I surrender all to you Praise God. Somebody said, help, Brother Myers. I didn't intend to get this wound up. We got visitors and I was afraid. Praise God. Amen. Folk going to leave. <laughs> what in the world kind of crazy preacher they got over there at Gray Street? I'm going to tell you what. I love the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, I know what he did for me. And I know where I was when he found me. Somebody say, man. 
I know what a mess my life was. Most of you know my wife and I had been together since she was 15, uh, 13, and I was 15. I tell you, we was on the verge of a divorce. I about to lose it all. Come on now. Amen. Everything was falling apart. My high school sweetheart, everything's on the verge. Uh, everything's about to fall apart. But I remember the night uh, I was supposed to work overtime uh, and God worked it out. I ended up in a little old church. Uh, hey man, I went into that church and I told you already, I thought a lot of those folks were crazy. Come on now. I wasn't raised in church. I didn't know about all that stuff. I went in and thought a lot of them was crazy. But you know what I did? I got in that church and I got under conviction. Oh, hey man, come on. You know what the Lord did? I came to a well side and the Lord came to that same well side. I ended up in the altar and God met me there. And I want you to know I was carrying so much when I came to that well side. And about 15, 14, 15, 16 years old, I took a fire extinguisher and nearly beat a kid to death with it. I sat around a room full of counselors who looked at me and said, by the time you're 18, you'll be in prison. I'd give anything to go back to that meeting tonight. Stand up and say, wait a minute. You got it all wrong. It's one of these days you're looking at a young man with a reputation. But one of these days I'm going to find me a well and I'm going to run into a man with a reputation for saving souls, for making men whole, for changing lives, for turning us upside down and inside out and right side up. Say amen. I want to tell you something here tonight. I'm not saying I'm perfect. Say amen, somebody. But I'll tell you this much, and I've said it over and over. When I got saved, my beautiful wife who I love so much, come here, honey. Amen. It makes me feel better when she stands close to me because it makes me feel like I might could preach better. Come on now. I had a wife that prayed like crazy. You know the story, oil and spaghetti, oil and sweet tea, oil on my gas pedal. She anointed everything. You know why? Because she believed in what she ran into. Amen. You see what happens is, is that when you have faith and you know what he did for you, Come on now. My wife at a young age. You looking at her, you could probably never imagine this. And I'll get fired when I get home, but pray for me anyhow. She'll get me out of the doghouse before too long. But my wife, she worked at one, one place. Amen. And this woman who you could never imagine, she stole from the place that she worked at. Ended up at the Eustace Police Department as a teenager. Amen. Can I tell you tonight? Amen. I remember whenever we got married her background she didn't know anything about church like we're used to and I didn't either we were way up in Gate City Virginia on the border of Kingsport Tennessee I remember we went to that little log cabin church we walked into that place my mama and my uh, my uh, aunt and my other relatives they told us they said now look here you two you've been together all this time and you're living together and you ain't even married you need to get right and you need to get married and quit living in sin. My wife told me, she said, that's it, that's all. Come on now, you understand, read between the lines. Uh, hey Amen. my wife told me, that's it, baby. I love you, but we're gonna do things the right way. And you know what happened to me? This is my story. You know, this is what happened to me. What happened to that little girl raised up? Uh, we ain't going to call the church she was in. Bless God anyway. Raised up in a whole nother mindset. Hey Amen, she went to church, uh, and that woman that stole something as a teenager ended up in the Eustace Police Department. Uh, Hey man, that same woman went to an altar down in a little church in, in the middle of nowhere. And guess what? She met a man with a better reputation. A woman that had a reputation walked in on one night and she left clean. She left whole and she left clear. She left saved. I want to tell you something tonight. That, that's the God that we're serving. In this world, 
They can jump, rant, and rave while people get half naked on YouTube, on the TV screen, scream, holler, jump, and get loud at football games while they toss a piece of leather up and down the field. But I'll tell you, the Bible said that when one soul gets saved, all of heaven rejoices. And if you're here tonight and you say, Brother Myers, I'm planning on going to heaven now. Well, if you're planning to go to heaven, you might as well learn how to worship now. You might as well know how to rejoice and glorify God now. Because when I get to heaven, the Bible said there ain't going to be but 30 minutes of silence. You know what that is? That's a reverence period. But after that 30 minutes, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be all of heaven glorify. The Bible said the angels, they cry thrice. Holy, 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 holy It's the Lord God Almighty I'm going to tell you tonight When you get to eat up with the zeal of the Lord I'll tell you it'll change your life Somebody say amen to me tonight I want you to hear what the Bible said Anybody can see that I, I feel what I'm preaching here tonight You see, this woman saith unto him she said, I know the Messiah is cometh, which is called Christ. When he's come, he'll tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. The Bible said in verse number 27, And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? I want that to set in to you. All of his disciples have just got back from going to get meat. And guess who he's talking to? He's talking to that woman that nobody's supposed to talk to. You know what that tells me? That tells me that this is a whosoever meetup. It don't matter what side the tracks you were born on. Don't matter what colored skin you got. Don't matter what your name is. Don't matter how much money your parents got in the bank account. He said, it's for every one of you. And I'm bound, bit, and determined to tell you that in the scripture that it was meant for that passage to take place if for no other reason that the disciples and everybody else knew, hey, let's broadcast it from the mountaintops, the hillside and the valley. It doesn't matter if you were born a Jew or if you're a Samaritan. God said it's for you. It's for them. It's for everyone that will. Hey, man, can I tell you, the Samaritan had a reputation, but he had a reputation for bringing them out. I want you to hear what the word of God said. And the Bible said, they marveled that he talked with her. In verse number 28, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city. Listen to what this woman says. If you don't, let me tell you this, if you don't get any bit excited about what God's done in your life, I'm wondering because I think it was Paul Washer, Walker, I can't remember his name, that said something along these lines. And I want you to think about this. I like the way he put it. He said, being saved by God and expecting there not to be any great significant change in your life is as crazy as a man going and standing in the middle of the interstate and a log truck loaded down full of logs going 85 miles an hour hits you head on and you come away without a scratch. He said, if you think you can get saved and not experience a radical transformation in your life, you got another thing coming, say man. But when the Lord comes in, Sister Kathy, he said, I'll be with you all the way to the end. In other words, when they walk off and leave you, when they forsake you, when they talk about you behind your back, if you're laying in the hospital and a pope, a rabbi, a bishop, or nobody don't visit you to check on you if you get the sniffles or a runny nose and nobody calls and says, hey dear, how you doing? God said, I'll be with you every step of the way. Oh, I feel the Lord here tonight. I'm gonna share this with you as I get near closing tonight. You see, I want this to really, really sink in. 
about this woman. Here we have a woman with a reputation. She's a half-breed Samaritan. Nobody's supposed to deal with her. She's probably been with many men. The one she's with, she should not be with. You see, this debunks a lot of the attitude and the persona that you and I have to have it all together before we meet him at the well. (laughs) Somebody said, that's good right there. Huh? Because the devil will get on your shoulder and the devil will say, no. Those church folks down there, they expect you to come in. You got to have a suit on, a tie on. You got to have your hair fixed a certain way. You got to have on the right shoes. Come on now, you got you to do this. You got to say that. You got to walk. You got to shake the hand a certain way. Jesus debunked every bit of that right there. She, here she is. She's with a woman right now. She's with another man right now who ain't even the one she's supposed to be with. And the Lord says, hey, I'm going to give you something. Some folks will think, well, whenever I get my life straight, I'll come to God. That ain't what happened on that day. Somebody say, he's preaching right there. Yeah. Well, if I get my life right, then every, whenever, then God will accept me. Then God will do this. Let me tell you, God might use you when your life gets straight, but I'm not going to go as far as to tell you he won't save you till you get your life straight because that would, that, that would render salvation of none effect. Why would I need to be saved if I could get my life straight? Hey, but say, man, somebody, if I could live good on my own and I did not need the saving grace of God, I'm telling you here tonight, I would not need him, but I need him and so do you. Hey man, there were things in my life that even when I tried to do better, I could only go so far. But when the grace of God came in, he changed many things. She had many men that she was with, possibly as I told you before, a woman of many lovers, a woman who sold herself for the value of a dollar. A woman that had taken on what society would call low degree. She was the woman that went after the water every day. Oh, he's the bus boy down at that cafeteria. Oh, she's just the cashier down at Kentucky Fried Chicken, or she's not really important. She's not a college graduate. She doesn't have a bachelor's in science. She's not driving a Mercedes. She's not married to the wealthiest man this side of Florida. Somebody say, thank God that he stops by and visits people with a reputation. Come on, somebody. The lowly little woman. Yeah, you know that one. She done had several men. Who's she with now? Those are the kind of people that talk about. Those are the kind of people that are constantly having to defend their reputation on Facebook. Constantly having to say, I know y'all think I'm this. I know this. But it ain't like you think it is. Am I preaching? Those are the kinds of people that sometimes cry their self to sleep at night because they know they're not as bad as everybody thinks that they are. They just need help to get it together. All they need is a meet up. All they need is to meet somebody with a better reputation. Come on now, somebody. When I went to the funeral of Brother Don Brewer, I may have shared this, but I listened to what they were saying. Brother Don Brewer was faithful in this church, and if it had not been for Brother Brewer, there are many parts and aspects of this church that may not be here today. But Brother Brewer had a very big part in this church. He was a man of God. As far as I know, all the way up to his very dying breath, he was a man of God. Well, I'll tell you that at his funeral, his daughter, Sister Vanessa, stood up and she said a lot of things about her dad. And I'm listening very intently. And she said something that stuck with me. She said, my daddy used to say, there's no such thing as good people and bad people. We're just all people. People that either make good choices or bad choices. Did that just sink in? Because that's deeper than you realize. I've met a lot of folks that one decision defined their whole life as far as everyone else was concerned. They were like the woman that was bowed together 18 years and the Bible said she could no wise straighten herself up. But the Lord did in her what she could not do and doctors could not do for herself. 
he straightened her up. And I can hear in town, yeah, you know her. She's that one that's been over, that lady. Sometimes we can be known as, yeah, that girl. You know the one that was with the three guys? You know that girl, yeah. That's the way society looks at people. There are people that don't even know your name, but they remember what you've done. And they will remember it because it makes them feel better about their self that you messed up so bad. But listen to Brother Myers, and I want you to listen to me very closely. You are not, you are not going to let one, two, or 50, or a 1,000 decisions define the rest of your life. I've come tonight under the inspiration of the Lord God of heaven to tell you that all you need is for one reputation to meet up with another kind of reputation. You get that car to the right mechanic, honey, what nobody else could do. What I could not do on my own is what God himself will do in you. You say, God, I tried to get my life straight. And the more that I mess with the puzzle, the more the pieces get messed up. God says, listen, I'm the one that made it. And if anybody knows how to put it together, I do. Brother Farmer, I finally said to myself, look here, this is a Nissan Altima. There's a Nissan dealership. They got a good deal. Let me tell you folks something. There ain't much better deal than salvation paid for by the blood of the Lamb and you ain't got to do nothing but give your life to Him and live for it. But I took it to the place that made it. And I'm going to tell you something. If God can't fix you, can't nobody fix you. You might try, you might put one after another. You might try to put a band-aid on it. You might try to change a certain part of your life thinking it'll get better. But there ain't nobody that can fix you like God can fix you. You're here tonight, you say, Brother Myers, I've got an addiction. I've been living off of pain pills. I live off prescription pills. Brother Myers, I've got an addiction. I've got a lying tongue. I've got a bitter spirit. I've got a hateful attitude let me tell you I know somebody who can deliver you I know somebody and I want you to think about something here tonight I'm going to share with you a story I want you to ask the Lord to help me to get ready and close here I've got to close we lived in Claremont Florida several years back we had a next door neighbor And she had a major addiction to cigarettes. She had tried to quit so many times and just never could. She knew how zealous, I'm just going to use the word zealous. She knew how zealous that we were about healing, about deliverance, about the things of God, and just believing what that Bible says. And she came to us one day. And she said, Brother Myers, she said, you know, I've got a problem and I've smoked and I've tried everything and I just can't get free. And I looked at her, so I'm going to tell you something. I said, I'm just going to put it plain to you. There are people out there in the world who don't believe in God. They don't have any faith or trust in God whatsoever who've just up and gone cold turkey and quit. There are people out there in the world who don't believe in God who've got free from things like this. And I said, now let me put this in perspective for you. I said, when we as a Christian say, I believe that he hung the moon in its place. I believe that he reached down and got some dirt up in his hand, spit in it, and created a man out of it. Are you following what I'm saying? He kept Jonah alive in the guts of a fish for three days and three nights. He kept the Hebrew boys alive in a furnace fire, heated up seven times hotter than it's ever been heated. He kept Daniel alive in the den of lions. He took a woman that was had an issue of blood for 12 years and spent everything she had, couldn't get no better. He took that woman and he healed her body of that infirmity. I could go on and on and on. And if I believe 
that God hung the moon and the stars. Have we not faith that God can heal you, can deliver you, and give you freedom? She looked at me and she said, I never thought of it like that. I told her to open up her mouth and I did something probably nobody's ever seen before. There's a lot of crazy stuff I've seen. I don't believe in people punching folks in the stomach and all that crazy stuff because to me that's borderline weird. I'm just going to tell you. But I believe what the Bible said. And I told her I felt the Spirit of God deal with me. I said, I want you to Lift your hands. We're going to pray for you. I took that oil, put some on the end of my finger. I told her, I said, open your mouth. And I anointed her tongue. Because that craving that you have. And we prayed for her. Here's what I'm telling you. You say you have faith to believe he is, was, and is to come. If you really believe that he is the son of God. God gave you a measure of faith When you were born, we are all born with a measure of faith. If you can believe that he is the son of God, and this is more than just a book or a record of what some men wrote, I personally, I know, I don't just believe. This book was holy men of God who were moved on and inspired as the Holy Ghost moved on them. That's the reason why that this has been used for archaeological uh, resources over thousands of years to uh, look back and verify documented history when they would do a dig and unearth something and then go back and they would use this to help them map things out and then find out that what was written in here was true. It is the oldest a textbook known to man. This book right here in, a, in the United States of America when we first were born as a nation and you look back, this was the textbook in many school systems. I want you to understand this nation was built under one nation under God and I'm not talking about any God. God Jehovah. We're talking about the God who is, was, and is to come. And if I can believe he is God and I can believe that this word says what it says tonight by just a very simple act of faith I can believe that all I have to do is claim it in the name of Jesus down in an altar and believe it leave it at that altar and get up and walk out it's done the Bible said Jesus said this himself you have not because you have not I want you to stand all across this house tonight As I close, I'm hoping tonight, Sister Moran, if you play something for me tonight, if you don't mind, I try to move around, use different folks from time to time here. Have we had a meetup with somebody with a much better reputation?